Now, please recall that previously we defined the linear momentum of an object traveling in a straight path to be represented by lowercase p. And we said that we could calculate the momentum of an object by taking the mass of that object, m, and multiplying it by its velocity, v. In a very similar way, we can define the angular momentum of an object. We're going to represent that with a capital L as not m times v, but i, the moment of inertia, multiplied by omega, the angular velocity. And so please note that the units for angular momentum are a bit different than the units for linear momentum because the moment of inertia is measured in kilogram times a square meter. Uh, the units for angular momentum are kilogram times meter squared per second. So in the uh, diagrams here I've shown, you know, you can think of a billiard ball, you know, being hit as having linear momentum. Um, you'll also might imagine it would have angular momentum as well because it would be rotating. Um, but uh, you can mostly say it has linear momentum. And, you know, someone spinning a basketball on their finger is a great example of something that has purely rotational momentum. All right. Now, just like in linear motion, we talked about changing the momentum of an object by applying a force to it over a period of time. And we called that impulse. We said that the impulse or change in momentum of an object, delta P, was equal to the force that was changing that object, right? In other words, the net external force multiplied by delta T, the time period over which that force was applied for. So in the case of Serena Williams hitting a tennis ball with her tennis racket, right? Serena Williams was able to change the momentum of that tennis ball by applying a force F with her racket to it for a small period of time. Now for angular momentum, uh, we're going to have a very similar expression. We can change the angular momentum of an object, delta L, by applying a net external torque over a period of time. And so you might imagine throwing a frisbee as a change in the angular momentum of that frisbee, or in other words, when you throw a frisbee, right, you are imparting an impulse on that frisbee. It doesn't have angular momentum, and then as you, you know, let go of it, it is spinning and has angular momentum. The frisbee would also have linear momentum as it's traveling through the air linearly, um, and angular momentum then as it's spinning. But in order to give it angular momentum, you had to apply a torque to it for a certain amount of time. And in order to change something's linear momentum, right, we apply a force to it for a certain amount of time. And so these two expressions are analogous.